Okay, I am very sorry about the delay. There was an issue with the Zoom platform, so we have moved over to Google Meet. Um, if you are here, I'm excited that you were able to make it, um, and if you would like to let your friends know that we are doing Google Meet, that would be great. Um, we have put the information out on our website as well, the Google Meet link. Um, so one, opening of the meeting, the regular board meeting of May 11th, 2023 is called to order at 6.59 p.m. Can I get roll call, please? Tim Jordan, so Tom Costner here. Falls Graff here. Brianna Texoni here. Lester Mascon is absent. He did let us know he would be absent ahead of time. Um, the regular board meeting agenda, it's recommended the board approve the regular meeting agenda for May 11, 2023. Can I get a motion? Move. Second. Do we have any changes? No changes to the agenda. Thanks. Um, all those in favor? Tim Jorgensen, I. Costa and I. Falls, you have five. Brianna Taxoni, I with one absent. Public participation. Do we have any public participation? Not at this time. Thank you. Um, 3A adjourn to close. Oh, closed session discussion items. During closed session, we may discuss conference with labor negotiators. Public employee discussion, discipline, dismissal, release, conference with legal counsel, or student matters. 3B, adjourn to closed session. Can I get a motion? I'll move. Second. All those in favor? Second. Harden, second. Costa and I. Balls, you got aye. Brianna text on the aye. We are adjourned to closed session at 7.01 p.m. All right. Um, the regular board meeting of May 11, 2023 will reconvene at 8.06 p.m. Um, the flag salute will be led by Mr. Austin. Everybody, please rise. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, like, 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 you have a civility statement when you write my Communicate clearly and concisely with the respect for the time of others. Listen objectively, carefully considering the options of opinions of others. Understand the counterproductive effects of disruptive, demeaning, and intimidating behaviors. Understand and respect district policies and procedures. Maintain a respect for the rich history of the district and the efforts of others who have served in the past. Thank you. 6A public comments for commissions and reports. We have one public comment. I believe they are virtual. Correct, right, Mr. Alex? All right, I have one public comment card from Chad Wadsworth via. Um, did I skip something? I did. I'm so sorry. Chad, hang on. Um, I skipped section five, closed session. Report of action taken in closed session. There was action taken. Um, action taken by the board is that the board has completed the superintendent evaluation, which was deemed satisfactory. In compliance with the contract, the superintendent will receive a two and a half percent raise in the amount of five thousand four hundred and nine dollars and ninety cents for a total compensation of two thousand, sorry, two hundred and twenty one thousand eight hundred and five dollars and ninety cents. Now, six A public comments, recognitions, and reports. I have a comment card from Chad Wadsworth. Hi, Chad. I can't hear no. you if you're talking. I can't hear you. Can you like me here? I can hear you now. Thank you. Ah, uh, there we are. 
Good evening, distinguished board members, members of all the um, cool comments that I wanted to make regarding uh, your car's report tonight. It's a uh, travesty that uh, Nishadi is leading our lovely school district. Um, I wish I could say with great certainty that it is for uh, any other reason uh, besides not feeling valued, but I can't. Um, I hope she knows how much she's done for our high school, how many lives she's turned. Turn the microphone. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Hello. Chad, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I hope Ms. Shawnee uh, knows how much she's touched. Um, All right, my microphone shut off. Can you guys hear me again? Let's chat. Yeah, can you start over? Let's let's hear the whole thing. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. And I apologize for not being there. It's, uh, business is not allowing me right now. Um, starting out from square one, I, I um, it's a great travesty for our district that Miss Shawty is um is leading our school. Um, I wish I could say that it was full. For any other reason uh, besides not feeling valued, but I can't say that for certainty. Um, she has been a huge part of our high school for so many years, has such so many students' lives, good and bad. Um, and I don't know how that's going to get replayed. Uh, she brought so much knowledge and skill the classroom, whether it's a student struggling or an AP student that was smarter than the rest of the class, she could relate and teach. And I find that to be very disturbing that um, that, that she's, she's leaving. And, and like I said, I feel that it's because she doesn't feel valued based on what I know. Moving on from that, uh, the best thing on the progress report is that Kim Shaw is leaving the school district for three and a half years without paying attention to her lackluster performance has cost her hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sorry, I, we can't let comments that degrade employees go on. So if you would like to continue your comments without degrading current employees or past employees, that would be more than welcome. Um, but if if it's going to keep going in, in that direction, we will just go ahead and, and shut that down. So, would you, if you'd like to continue, I find that so comical for you, Rick. Um, since we're on that game, uh, I won't continue any more on that. Um, the last thing that I would like to offer up is a, a community member, a parent of a family, a parent of a student who goes to our district, and something that I view to be a huge burden on our district. Ken, respectfully, please consider stepping down and letting the other four members there continue on. Okay. Let it go. This is his time. Um, it's for no other reason than the last board meeting. Watching the, the circus of stepping off the diocese and sitting out in the, in the audience. You did so much for the district when you came on board six, five years ago, whatever it was, and you solved all of the um, charter school issues. You did so much then. And in today's time, it just seems like the meetings are a burden to you. So all I'm saying as the community member is the thing is that somebody's lived in the town for almost 30 years, so they have the kids go to school. It's time for a, a change. There's something on that board, there's something in that district office that's not working. I don't know what it is, I can't put my finger on it, but you've been there the longest, and we continue to keep seeing good, valuable employees leave our district. So respectfully. It's not to, to, to dig 
It's just a respectful comment that I make me as a concerned citizen. I wish you all nothing but the best, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other public comments? Not at this time. Okay. Moving on um, to correspondence, proposals, and reports. Do we have an outer representative? Mr. Sparks is not here. However, um, he's out of state, and I'd like to make a quick announcement on his behalf. He did inform us, Mr. Okay. Sheldon Sparks, out of representative, teacher, AD. He's now in Virginia celebrating his son's graduation. So we wanted to go ahead and congratulate him, his family on this accomplishment. Kudos to Mr. Sheldon Sparks and your son on this major accomplishment. Many more. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations to Mr. Sparks and Little Sparks. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> uh, 7B CSBA representative. He's uh, on his way. <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing got this guy. Student representative. Emily, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. It's good to be back. Um, I have just like a brief set of updates for today. So, High Desert will be having a talent show on May 17th at 6 p.m. Uh, this Saturday is prom, so students are highly looking forward to that. Should be really fun. Um, our high school sports team. Um, they've all of their seasons have come to an end. So softball had their second round of schedule team this week. Um, unfortunately, they weren't able to take the victory, but they've had a great season. I think they've had like a streak of losing the first game of Skyf, and this is like the year they broke that like curse. So that was really nice. Um, students have been busy with AP tech, but thankfully they conclude this week. Um, and May 24th at La Cabana, the freshman class is having a fundraiser. So it'd be great if the community could come out and support them. Um, I also just wanted to bring attention to the fact that um, another class in our high school is left stuck again. Uh, assignments on Google Classroom without teacher instruction, or at least a sub that's knowledgeable in that subject is not enough. Like it doesn't teach you and students are really hurting, like grades are hurting, just the understanding of the subject. Students are suffering because of this. I just wanted to make sure that's all. Thank you, Emily. Um, a superintendent gold standard report. Thank you, Ms. Saxon. I just want to make a comment to uh, Emily or I'll share with Emily that I'll, I'll take your concerns. I know you're representing the student body at Vasquez. I'll take it back to the administration at Vasquez. So I appreciate that. All right, tonight I'll be covering two initiatives from our existing strategic plan you see on the screen, student achievement as well as community engagement. I met with Dr. Okino, uh, LACO coordinator serving as LACO's liaison for our district's differentiated assistance. The overarching goal of California's system of sports is to help districts and their schools meet the needs of each and every student we serve with a focus on building local capacity to sustain improvement and to effectively address disparities um, within outcomes and opportunities. Primary focus for us, for our vulnerable populations, which include homeless youth, English learners, and students with disabilities, um, one area to be targeted is chronic absenteeism moving forward. Chronic absence is defined as missing 10% or greater of the total number of days of fall during the school year for students. Moving forward with the week of May 8th, recognized as Teacher Appreciation Week, we want to take this time to express our sincere appreciation not only for this week, but throughout the year to our extraordinary teachers who have worked tirelessly with students and families throughout this academic calendar. In addition, each May, California salutes the important contributions of classified employees during Classified and School Employees Week, which is the week of May 21st coming up. Our classified employees keep our district running every single day and are critical in moving us forward toward our vision collectively. So kudos and congratulations. We cannot do this without you. Community engagement. A quick update to our strategic planning process. The writing team is now tasked with taking the main themes from our development 
team sessions and updating the strategic goals and how we define the goals, which will include actual items in order to achieve goals along with measurable outcomes. The, type, the writing team has been working diligently these past few weeks in developing an update to include a graduate profile. We're looking to bring back our development team at the end of this month to share the final draft for their review. At our June 8th board meeting, we will formally present the updated plan for your consideration. And lastly, yesterday at Meadowlark Elementary, Mr. Kevin Mesco and I had the pleasure of attending the second assembly for a WISP challenge. Great work by the Meadowlark staff and PTO, Ms. Heather Miliotti, for bringing back the incredible Harlem Wizards for an invigorating assembly, getting our students moving and our students have plenty of talent. To say the least, and you can check out this very short clip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, COVID report. report. I'm respectfully requesting that we remove COVID report from our board meeting agenda moving forward since the WHO World Health Organization declared May 5th an end to COVID global health emergency. Important request. Is removing the, 19, the COVID 19 report something that we need to vote on, or does anybody have any objections to removing it? Okay, um, so we have submissions. No submissions. I see you there. Thank you. Board member comments, Tim. Okay, so I did first off. Uh, it's that time of the year where we get to recognize our certificated employees. And as a former employee in that realm with my colleagues and former colleagues, I know that there's lots that goes on in the classroom. And our teachers, they work their tails off for our students. So I want to thank them for their hard work and preparation. And there's a lot of things that go into that. Uh, we were on distance learning. We came back into the classroom. And the challenges that teachers face today, I mean, if anybody doesn't respect the teachers, go we'll talk to the parents that had to teach their kids when they were at home. And they found out that the challenges that they faced monitoring, scheduling, making sure that their students were able to complete classwork at home, and they were really dealing with their own kids. Our teachers deal with 25, 35, 40 kids from multiple households with influences and behaviors, and yet they still have a responsibility to make sure that the content, the respectfulness, the character of everything that happens. So our teachers have done an exceptional job. We can put, and we did, provide program software, computers, Chromebooks. We, we pump a lot of money into our online learning programs to help our students out during that challenging time of the COVID lockdowns. But computer learning is not the same. Online learning is not anywhere near matching seat time. And the unfortunate reality is, is our teachers came back Students came back and they were welcome and they wanted to come back, but there was a lot of behaviors and challenges that returned with the students. There was learning loss that we determined. Everybody knows there's learning loss with math and English skills, but one of the significant learning loss was just the socialization of being in a structured classroom instruction. So on top of the content that our teachers have to do, our teachers had to enhance and create that learning environment for the students. And throughout that, 
there was one big hazard that was returned to the classroom that still we need to address and still needs to be, and that's the electronic device that our students were depend on. You go into a classroom now, and 40, 50, 60 percent of the kids are on this device and not paying a lick of attention to their teachers. So teachers have to learn how can I get them to use that device in my content, in my lesson, so that I can get them to pay attention. I see it, and I work currently for Cal State Bakersfield, and I go around and observe young teachers trying to be teachers, wanting to be teachers. And the, the behaviors are not unique to us. It's in every district that I've been in. I go to Ms. Jensen is here from Palmdale School District. I have several students in her district. I have students in the Antelope Valley District. I have students in my alumni Hart High School down in New Santa Carina. And from room to room, class to class, this device has created great challenges for our certificated employees. Now, the good news is the significant majority of our certificate employees have been able to adapt to that and they continue to provide content information. They continue to have that rigor to help our students succeed. We're now going approaching AP testing and Time and again, our students score top notch. They score fours, they score five, multiple fives. Some of that is because of the teachers getting that basic introduction, but a lot of it is the cooperation and the work with the parents as they understand the challenges that our students face. And I hope they respect and understand the challenges that our certificated employees face. And it's the students themselves. We have significant students in our district. We're very, very fortunate. Every school that I go to, I'm constantly comparing and contrasting. What does our school district offer that these other districts don't? And what do they offer that we don't? Well, we've designed ourselves into a penumbra because we have very limited electives that we can provide for our students. So it's all based on four subjects content that our teachers have to do. There's not that relief valve for our students. We have electives, we have some athletic programs, we have choir, we have hopefully have some play production, we have culinary arts, we have some other things, but the one key element that I really want to give congratulations to, and I think that we're making a step in the right direction to facilitate the support of our certificate employees is that all of these academic subjects, these core subjects, these important core subjects, English, math, science, literature, chemistry, they're important, yes. We need to have, we need to provide that for, for a balanced education, but they, the students need an outlet. And I'm always impressed, and I was impressed years ago when I was visiting my sister in Oregon and I went to a couple of schools while I was there and woodshop in Oregon, where they have tons of trees and lots of wood, was one of the more popular electives they could get. And I went in there and I talked went in a couple of classes, and the significant majority of the students in that class were AP students. And I go, what are you doing this? They wanted something other than what their content was. Give them a relief. They were doing athletics, but so as we move forward to support our teachers with technology and software and programs and, and how to deal with this little device that causes havoc in the classrooms, I'm hopeful that our administration will continue to support them in the management of their class to help create that learning environment for our students. But we can continue to look for electives for our non-athletes to give them that vent, to give them that release so that when they go back to that academic study and that rigor that we require and we want from them to be critical thinkers in advancing their education, that we can give them something else to do. And the one thing that we have going to start fall is career connections, where we're gonna be responding to the 40, 50% of our students that are not gonna go to University of California. They're not going to go to Cal State University. They want to go to work. And they're just as important as our high achievers, students that want to be chemists, physicists, a whole bit. I'm very proud that my nephew's graduated from Oregon State University with a degree that he's going to be going in and he's got an internship at Los Alamos in New Mexico. And I'm going, and the one thing that he always tells me is when I go up there, he doesn't do a lot of chores because he's not an athlete. 
but he does participate in electives at his school so that he can make sure he keeps that balance going forward. So all of these things put together, our teachers have done a tremendous job. I thank each and every one of them, but like every other business, we have good and bad. We have teachers that can improve. They got to include technology in their classroom. They need to invent. And I counsel my candidates that I said, well, all the stuff you're learning in college, those are guidelines. You need to think outside the box. Take what your district provides you, your school site administration provides you, and then you build on that to give the challenge for your students. Add levity to your classroom, add fun to your classroom, and meet all the standards. And they've done that time and again. And it's proof in the pudding that we have A students, AP students scoring exceptionally well. Now, do we have improvements still? Oh, absolutely. We still have a learning curve and a learning loss that we need to improve on. We can't lift the bar. We can't lower the bar. We have to continue to push forward with the discipline, the character, the integrity, the teamwork. And our teachers are doing that. And I'm very proud of our teachers at the school. There's lots to do. They're coming up for the last couple of weeks of school. Like we said, and they said AP is in, is it starting this next week? And it's finished. So now they're sitting back and sweating the scores, but they prepped and prepared for that. But there's still finals preparation. There's projects that need to be done and I wish our students best and I thank our staff for everything that they do. I was going to say something about classified, but we have a few members sitting in the front row. They have to wait till next board meeting because their week is the week of the 21st. So I'll reserve my comments for our key uh, classified staff, but they are just as much, just as important. And all our administrative and management up here at the district, you guys have to take a second seat. It's in the field. It's the field people that are doing the work and the sites that represent our students. So thank you, teachers, once and again. Keep up the good work and all the best to the students as we finish up our school year. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, I just want to thank Ms. Median for her board member comments. Uh, it's so important to get the students' perspective. And I know that the school year is almost finished, and our term and your term is exactly lined up. So we didn't, me personally, didn't get much from you over the you know, on this side of the uh, board here, so I, on this side of the board. Um, so I really appreciate your comments. I appreciate that you can relate to us how important it is and how difficult it is for you as a student and other students when we have teachers that are out for long periods of time, long-term subs, uh, especially when it gets so close to testing and losing that invaluable time with that teacher, especially with AP classes, because we get one shot at it. And having students, two of my students, my children with AP classes, they can get college credit, which is fantastic, but it can also save us a lot of money because when you get in there, you can just get, get credits instantly. You can get through your schooling faster, or you can choose that, uh, more important things that you want to do in general ed. So I really appreciate you bringing that back, and I really appreciate that uh, Tom just talking to colleges that when you bring it up. Um, there's only a few meetings left, obviously, but uh, remember you are a full board member. Only restrictions you can't vote. And you can't vote that, so. If you ever have anything to say, I'm definitely interested in hearing it. So thank you very much. And teacher appreciation is uh, apparently it's been going very well. Um, I've got some notes here. Uh, the PTSO of parent organizations have been all stepping up and doing a great job. Uh, thank you to the parents groups at each site. I know that VHS PTSO has had a long week of food items for the staff. Taco bars, advanced culinary under the direction of Mrs. Wagner, and make delicious Italian cafe meal. Uh, that sounds kind of fun. Uh, they outlive themselves, and the food continues tomorrow with ice cream. So I, I think it's really good. I know that my wife comes home uh, from doing PTS work on these uh, teacher appreciation days and, and staff appreciation. So I know everybody's invited to teacher appreciation. I know the staff is spent too. And she's Excited about it. So it, it, it's good community work, and we really appreciate what you all do. So thank you. 
Thank you. Good evening. It's so wonderful to see two former board members in our audience this evening, Mr. Wadsworth and Ms. Kelly Jensen. Thank you for being here. Um, I'd like to make my comments that may be considered a little controversial and have a whole board here so we can come back here and, and, and give everybody an opportunity to, to um, say what they uh, need to, so I don't always have the last word. But I'll start this evening by saying, uh, I want to thank everyone for all these invites I'm getting. Um, there are so many celebrations, and this is my favorite time of year because you see kids moving from one grade to the other and then out the door into an adult world where going to college or some CTV program and, and going to on to a, a, an independent, productive adult life. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Um, I attended the final Los Angeles County School Trustees Association governance training session on May 9th. The sport park training was offered to all Los Angeles County School Board trustees free of charge. It was a nice touch up for the four day California School Boards Association governance training that I attended with my board colleagues several years ago, including Ms. Jensen and Mr. Jorgensen. Um, again, we'll keep this fairly short. I need to clarify a couple of things from the last meeting so everybody out there understands. I do, first off, I do have an IQ of more than three, and everyone in my family, regardless of what the perception may be, has an IQ of more than three. Um, there's some discussion about why I stepped down off the dais. When I stepped down off the dais, it's because I don't want to participate in something that's happening that I feel may present a liability to the district, or worse yet, me personally. Some people are under the misconception that you can sit up here and you have this privilege that elected officials seem to enjoy. The law tells you that as long as you think you're operating within your privilege, meaning I think I'm doing a good thing, it's a pretty loose parameter. But when I start mentioning names of employees and, and, and diving into that and doing extemporaneous reviews from up here and talking about, I only have interest in one employee and I have a 20% interest in this employee and that's the superintendent. I don't run him. He's hired to be the educational leader in this district. I'm not a principal. I'm not the director of education. I don't do investigations. You will find me very seldom at a school site unless I'm invited to go there to enjoy some celebration. And if there's anyone that I have influence in or more so influence over me, it's Miss T every other Friday when I get my daughter off the bus and get the Miss T lecture. But short of that, I do not involve myself in the undercurrents of the district. So if I step off the dais, that might be an indicator that I'm starting to feel uncomfortable that I'm being dragged into. So I don't go into worlds, but at the end of the day, some attorney says you've outstepped your bounds. You personally have left the district exposed to, to a legal issue because legal issues result in payouts. And you know what the funding source is? That is the money that goes to educate all of our children. Yes, I do have a child at the school district or at Vasquez, I can't remember, Ms. T. Helping. But at the end of the day, I don't know that the Los Angeles County Register uh, requires that the minute your child crosses the stage that you step off the board. I'm not familiar with that. So. Uh, there was a reference last time in, in an agenda item about uh, sports uh, facilities, a request for like a five to 10 year sports program facilities, uh, budget, uh, and, and uh, you, you heard me vote no on that. And I want to explain why. There were references to what this process would look like, um, who the stakeholder participants would be, and references to some employee positions that don't even exist in the district at this time. Now, in my experience, I will make comments up here that kind of nuance. I might tell you something like, I don't know where we're going to put all the kids because 
before I got here, this used to be a library and two bedrooms. And now it's wherever this is. So I need floor space. So I tell the superintendent, I think we need floor space. I think you've heard me say floor space. I don't ask for an agenda. I don't imagine at some point we'll figure that out. But in my level, in my experience, the way to do it is to just have a have a one-on-one -on -one superintendent say this is really important. And that's how you do it. Because here's what happens when you start making extemporaneous requests from up here. Those requests can be leveraged to make staff feel like that board member just gave me a directive. And if I don't get that directive done or within the time frame to be responsive, I could be characterized in the community as unable being unresponsive. I, I don't give the committee what they want. I'm not capable of running the superintendent. And typically these extemporaneous requests come along with no consideration of staff. How many staff are available right now in your position control for extra projects that I want to bring out? Do you have hundred hours for me? If I said to you, I think my project is hundred hours. Do you think you could pull that together right now? Is there the budget for it? Is there a DSA approval? Is there anything? No, I just want it. So you can bet that when the strategic plan comes, you just heard the superintendent tell you this is the strategic plan. What that is, it's a whole, whole district wide. Plan and it takes all kinds of little pieces. It takes sports, it takes special education, it takes community outreach, it takes facilities. It puts all that together. It's coming from the community. I would hope. I went to the SPED meeting. Other than that, I, I don't involve myself in it. No, it's not up to me to tell the community what to think. But at the end of the day, when that plan is rolled up, we are the last years to hear it. And at that point, I can say, hey, you know, there's a concern about the sports groups. They're making huge strides. They really are. Look at what's happening at the junior high. So it is really important. It's an attendance draw. Here's the problem I have. Every fall, this room fills with teachers. And what they tell me is, we've got so many kids in our classroom. They have gone through several years without any, any formal support classroom structured support, where you've got a teacher out there looking at an individual student and saying, you know what, I, I know up here that kid is struggling. I need to spend some time with that. You can't see that over a computer. But every year, I would be smart for teachers for coming in here. It is what it is. If you want high scores, teachers have to be able to reach the kids. You cannot jam a bunch of kids in a classroom and expect that the teacher who can't reach them is going to produce results in high scores especially when you have differentiated learning going on and all this other stuff happening. So, what do I do? I need floor space. I keep saying that. I need floor space. And I need funding for teachers to fill those floor spaces. You hear Lester talking about onboarding people. So I think he's expecting that I'm glad about floor space when he's gets in his chair, he's going to be concerned with onboarding people properly, people coming from a different side. It doesn't help anybody to leave one school just because you're upset about something, you come and find out that this one is no better or worse. And you ready everybody to understand what I do on this board. It has never changed in the last six years, but besides that, I have all this written. I, everybody's entitled to their opinion. What I have to do on this board and I have always done as a board is to work to do my best to make sure that the staff of this district, under the direction of whoever sits in that chair, has the funding and the resources they need to let that person, everybody that supports each other, everybody has the money they need. That's what I do. That's what I continue to do. If I was handy to have around the charters work, doing what they do, we were winging money out. Somebody just told you that I was good at that. 
are probably pretty good at running money when they're selling the product. But that's what I do. I don't dive into the sites. I don't tell principals what to do. I don't hyper involve myself in investigations. I'm not a lawyer. I listen to what this gentleman has to say. And I, I think you all heard tonight that he had a, he had a successful evaluation that was based on some parameters we put out last year. He's got some new ones. So the rest of this stuff is just nonsense. Why dump, why dump five gallons of gas on three matches? I'm done. Thank you. Um, I want to start off by thanking our teachers. Happy Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, you deserve to be appreciated every single day of the year. Um, not just one week, but this is this is your week. So um, happy um, Teacher Appreciation Week. We definitely really appreciate every, every single one that you do. Um, I was able to attend the High Desert Finals, the championship for basketball um, and our beautiful Vasquez gym. Once again, kudos to everybody that helped put that on. Um, Vasquez gym is just absolutely gorgeous as always. I went back um, to my work and got kudos from basketball parents and from our AV. Um, so thank you very much to High Desert and to Vasquez for again, putting on another championship. Um, we're the only school in the Silver League that hosts the championships for every sport. Every sport, sport after sport, we're the ones except for football. I think we can get football next year. Let's work on that. Yeah, um, on our new High Desert field, that would be awesome. Um, so let's work on getting our flag football high, at High Desert and then just host them all. Um, it's really fun and exciting to have the whole valley come out and see how great our sports fields and arenas are. I, I definitely feel pride. Um, I, so I know Vasquez is done with all of their sports. Congratulations to all the student athletes for being able to complete successful seasons. Um, and keep up with all of your schoolwork. Congratulations on finishing your AP test. I know High Desert has track coming up, right? Getting we did. For, getting ready for track. So there's one more. Today. We did today. We just came. You just did it? How'd you do? I think we did good. Good. Well, with no results by tomorrow. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to those results tomorrow. So we do have one more sport to keep up with. That's High Desert track team. So good mm -hmm. luck to them in this upcoming season. Um, I'm very excited for promotions, celebrations, um, graduations, award ceremonies, all that good stuff. Um, this is the part where it gets real, real, real busy for teachers and staff. So as kids and families are getting excited for the end of the year activities and then bringing out the summer and looking forward to summer vacations, teachers and staff are very much, you know, nose to the ground and just keeping up um, and trying to get through this year. It's a super busy time. So a huge thank you to the staff and congratulations to all of our students. Um, and that's all I have for that. So moving on to our consent agenda 9A, approval of consent uh, calendar items. That's going to include 8B, C, and D. Can I get a motion? I'll move. Second. I have a question on 9B. We can do this after. Oh, so we're in it, so we go over. Yes, you said it, so it's go for it. So I have, this is for uh, Michelle. On the contract with the Massachusetts for interns, now is this going to be for fulfilling classrooms where potential new teachers, we hire them as interns with the hope that they'll come here and perform and when they complete their credentialing that we'll be able to move them into the classroom. Is that what this is? Right, hiring them as an intern and working here. So they're gonna, they'll be compensated for it. Similar to what Cal State Vegas was us, but this now, do we have candidates? Is this, this is Massachusetts, we have people that are I guess they're doing online learning and they're living out here or whatever. Right. Dr. Sahaki, you can answer that. 
Well, oh, sure. Sure, Ms. Shah was saying yes. So it's it's UMass Global. So many of the interns are taking classes virtually. So many are local. Yeah, of course. Okay, so we so that's the effect that I had is to secure the services of some of these interns so that we can put them in vacancies in classrooms where they have content knowledge and they're going to be they're going to be working within their content their area. Okay, cool. Okay. Any other discussion, Tom? No. Good, thanks. All right, call for question. All those in favor? Ten doors. Tom, aye. All your aye. Brianna, text on me. Aye. Uh, 10A, personnel action report. Can I get a motion? I'll move. Second. Do we have any changes? No changes to the, to the board. Discussion? Okay. Uh, I, I do have a discussion. Um, the personnel action report is not a celebration of people onboarding or leaving us. And so it would always be my hope um, that when it comes to the end of the year, or I notice that there is a, an event coming up with, with for new staff, but I would hope that the district office would uh, reach out to employees that are leaving us to ask if they would Asia being recognized for their service as a personal action report and and some of the details go there have nothing to do with the level of service someone's given this district. Thank you. Thank you. Call for question. All those in favor? Ted Jorgensen. Also nine. Balls your app by Brianna Tex on the I. 11A school accountability report card. 2021-2022 school year for Vasquez High School, High Desert Middle School, and Meadowland Elementary School. Can I get a motion? Move. Second. Dr. Thank you. So the school start reports, school accountability report card, they provide information to the community to allow public comparison of schools for student achievements, environment, resources, and demographics. And so some might say, well, this is 2122. Why is it a start for 2122? It incorporates the data from the last academic calendar. And that's what we're um, requesting for recommendations approve 2122 starts for our three sites. Thank you. Discussion? Hearing none, call for question. All those in favor? Tim Jordan. Aye. Balls are up. Aye. Brianna text on me. Aye. Uh, 12A salary schedule. Why can I get a motion? Move. Second, Dr. Sanakian. Thank you. And so, specifically for salary schedule, why school psychologist classification? We are looking at a somewhat of a root cause analysis in terms of why we, we are having a difficult time in the recruitment piece for school psychologists. We've had vacancy over about 10 months. Is that correct, Ms. Shaft? It would take 10 months and um, not attracting candidates within the pool. So based on that, we looked at the salary uh, schedule and the steps, and we did take a look at, as part of the root cause analysis, a study, a uh, compar comparative study to neighboring distri districts in terms of um, starting salaries, such as New Hall, Sulphur Springs, Lancaster, Roland, and others. And we were at the bottom for school psychologists, the closest one was Sulphur Springs, um, but we didn't we still didn't make it there. So we are recommending for salary schedule wise, school psychologists to have a bump by 4.5% starting with step one. That would move the salary step one for school psychologists within our district from 90,000 to 93,000. And the steps uh, preceding that would include that 4.5% so that we could be competitive with our neighboring districts, attract and retain school psychologists for our school district program. Discussion? Okay, so my, my first obvious concern is, is this position linked or associated to other positions like if a supervisory position you would have short of overtime that people under would fall within whatever percentile. Is this linked to any other no. position? Okay. Um, is this person represented by any of the associations? No. Okay. 
Okay. Um, how has the work with contractors been? Spotty, good. Well, my parents said if you have me, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So I'll leave it at that. Okay, so let me ask you this. Knowing that the school psychologists typically deal, it would be my understanding, they're dealing with uh, assessments for special education. Would that be correct? Okay. Um, I'm wondering in, in retaining some of these people, is the environment conducive to retention? Let me give you an example. Let's say that I know a kid, and I talked about this last time, so you got to kind of go back and kind of watch my talk to the SCD. I talked about it at the uh, State uh, Advisory Commission on Special Education. They're discussing SED cases, which is severe emotional uh, trauma. Let's we'll leave it at that. And so what happens is you have people who are violent, they have to hurt themselves or hurt others. It takes forever to get an assessment. And then uh, the, the, the places they go are very restricted. It's almost like a state institution, but they end up going out of state and they end up being um, um, the district that can't, can't uh, take care of their needs ends up paying for it. And rather than, I talked about the state model of coming in and having the state say, okay, on these low incidence cases like this, we'll absorb the costs out of the big pot instead of punishing this rural district. And on top of that, we'll see the oversight. It's kind of weird to me. If I can't oversee, uh, if I can't give a student services, what gives me the capability to fly to Utah every once in a while and look this kid over and have the people up there say, here's a time to move out here. It's costing them $250,000 a kid there. So I think if you took the money out of it, like we take the cash registers out of the classroom or the lunchroom, what you will find is sometimes you have psychologists and directors of special education caught between somebody below them going, this kid needs really, really needs some help. You can have a resistant parent says, I want that kid mainstream. Well, the kid's beating up everybody in the second grade class. That was just an example. Uh, and everybody's in danger. But then up on top, you got board members that all they hear about special education, oh, another payout. And then the superintendent's caught in the middle. And a psychologist, rather than being able to give a professional opinion that's respected and supports the people below and is supported above, is not an environment for retention. So when we're calling in and talking about retention, that's what I want to talk about. Why is this district unable to retain psychologists as a work environment appropriate? That's not a question that you should answer in this room. I already know the answer. Thanks. That's my comment. Ms. Texan, I just want to add, putting levity to, levity to the side, our school psychologists from the agencies um, that we have had um, are doing the best that they possibly can, but um, again, if they are not a district employee, the onboarding, the training, the culture, it's, it's hit and miss. So I want to clarify just for record. Thank you. I knew what you meant, but thank you for clarifying. Um, okay, so all those in favor? Tim Jorgensen, I. Awesome. All your FI. Brianna Texoni, aye. Moving on to 13. A board of policy 5141.21 and administrative regulation AR 5141.21 administering medication and monitoring health conditions. This is a second read and adoption. So, can I get a motion? I'll move second. Dr. Sarkin, anything to add? I don't have anything to add for second read. Thank you. Discussion? Have we received any input from the new members on this? I don't know. I want to say we don't have any input or any suggestions or any feedback. Okay. okay, call for question. All those in favor? Ted Jordan, aye. Awesome. Balls, you got five. Brianna, text, tell me, aye. Um, Brianna, text, tell me, aye. Um, subject to um, B, board policy 5131.38 and administrative regulation AR 5131.38, campus and school bus safety use of cameras. This is a first read. Discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, so, Audrey, do you have something you want 
Sorry, I, I, I looked at Dr. Sahaki <laughs> and I said to Session what I meant, but Dr. Sahaki, do you have anything to add? Sorry, that was my fault. Can you answer my question? Sure. So we're introducing a new policy, just given our recent request to our trustees. Uh, we've had discussions in the past regarding proposal for cameras, uh, particularly on school buses, um, for reasons of safety. We're looking to roll out the cameras on the buses uh, in the fall uh, to roll it out properly. But we're looking for question. We're looking for a policy to proceed, precede the implementation, and the draft policy um, AR fifty one thirty one point thirty eight. Um, has items such as where uh, the location of cameras are acceptable and where they are not acceptable, how to notify community members, particular parents with notification that cameras are um, um, in place and, and live, retention of records, audio capacity, and the like. And so we're requesting for um, at the next board meeting approval of this new board. Um, AR and more policy for cameras um, as on, on campuses as well as our buses. Thank you. All right, discussion. So this is going to be an enhancement or modification of campus video because we already had cameras on the campuses. So it's going to be an enhancement of that. Is that what you're saying on the campuses? Not necessarily enhancement. It just provides the. Um, overarching parameters of um, where the locations for cameras could be installed, where they should not be installed on campuses as well as a school bus, um, written notification of um, cameras, whether it's going to be on campus or on a school bus. So it's really setting the parameters for the use of cameras. So it's going to have the signage appropriate to let everybody know you're coming out on our campus video. Campers are for security and safety or in use on this campus for what yes, the terminology is mm -hmm. uh, on entrances and periodic places on each campus. Correct. Now, the same thing will apply to the school bus that there'll be some display on the interior of the bus that cameras are in use for student safety and security. Okay. Retention of records. It says video images recording on security cameras, which record typically exist for a temporary period of time. That's very vague, temporary period of time. So the policy should state how long we can keep records. Um, cameras, you know, I, I, I agree they can be very valuable, but they're also a, a pretty serious invasion of privacy. So I, I would like to see on this policy a time limit defined. No, really. that's, that's my only comment on this. Thank you. Okay, so this had come up before. Um, and I think I asked for it to be tabled uh, because there were a couple of things I wanted to know. Um, I do not want employees being attacked on a school bus. And there were some concerns going back to these emotional issues and behavioral issues. And sometimes people just have issues that, well, they're, they're, they're out. Everybody understands what a manifest, a manifest determination is. People do things and they get expelled or suspended. And you're supposed to kind of take a look at what they did. Is that related to why they did it? And, that kind of thing, things that we know about, right? Sometimes it ends up back there. But is what happens when my child is a normal child without disability, without uh, an IEP or, or an eligibility, and attacks another child on the bus? What happens with that footage? So let's go to the next paragraph. Yeah. So according to the oh, article, thank you. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so essentially, with this regulation, it just kind of outlines what the videos will be used for in that second paragraph, just after where it talks about how long the videos are available. That if there is anything related to student that is deemed worthy of preservation and used as pupil records, so. 
if it does come up that there's a safety issue that then we can review that kept as a future record, which would then be it, it has a different definition of who has access to those records. Okay, so let's say, for example, somebody's looking at the records, we have drive cams, or they trigger off of G forces and stuff. I see people doing stupid things. When you, when you have a cam in your vehicle, don't use the six ladder the minute you bump or hit something because I can get into management. I can tell you about language. Yeah. You're driving things. But what I'm saying is, what, what, uh, Duty does the district have if the camera captures inappropriate behavior by a staff or a student? So, do I call the sheriff's department and provide them with the, the stuff? What, what, what happens? So, the, there's a process in place currently, and it'll continue, and it's been working. So, if, if it's deemed a disciplinary issue, it's egregious. The report is taken by the Delta bus driver. The information is uh, provided into the transportation department. Transportation department then communicates that to the respective site of the street. Just like anything that's supposed to happen now. Are the uh, are the associations generally in support of this? Is this been run by them? Is there any anything that causes the association to believe, believe that their privacy is being uh, impeded upon, impinged upon? We want to make sure that all the pieces are in place before implementation. That's the way we proceed. So the the proposal for the, the cameras, particularly on the buses, what were presented to the executive board of CNC for review. Okay, so so please include that in your staff summary if you can the next time for the people who don't hear it this time. Um, does the community know that your kid is going to be filmed? They will. Um, if this is approved, uh, particularly under AR5131, Section B, notification, written notifications to parents, parents shall receive notice of this regulation in the student slash parent handbook. Okay, so anybody that's coming to the district, a new kid on the bus route will know. Believe me, I read this whole thing, I can read. And uh, I like it when it's verbalized, so somebody looks me in the eye and asks my questions, thank you. So this is new, new board policy, not existing that we're just updating. That's correct. Where did the language come from in creating board policy? Great question, Mr. Fresco. Thank you. So after the when the cameras were brought up and tabled at the previous meeting, I reached out to our new board consultant, um, the ALRR, and they have put this um, particular AR and BD together from their knowledge of the existing law. So it's a draft that they have um, worded using their expertise uh, in board policy and administrative regulations. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, since it is a first read, we don't vote on it yet. So we will move on to calendar. Um, our next regular board meeting is May 25th. And we have two board meetings in June, June 8th and June 22nd. The June 22nd board meeting will be the last meeting for the 2022-23 school year. Um, moving on future agenda items, we have sports facilities long-term plan. President Kessler, board move on, I just wanted to remind you that I'm that such a spare that we should be back today. Thank you. Does anybody know? Everybody else will is planning on being here, correct? Thank you. Um, uh, a comment on the, the future agenda items. If we can take, for example, the sports facilities long term plan, I would hope that we're going to see the strategic plan. And I would hope that there's a great deal of attention given to the suggestion that it's incorporated in there. And I would hope that at the end of that presentation and, and robust discussion, that the board member that was asked for this to be on here will be consulted as to whether or not the level of discussion is appropriate to his needs and that it needs to be carried forward on the agenda. Until that time, I, I would suggest it remains on the agenda. There's also a um, an item on here about 
principal and job descriptions. Thank you. Um, I would like to propose to add um, a training by um, Mr. Ron Weinhardt. Should I say his name right? Um, he, we have been talking about board member roles and responsibilities um, and the role of the board and um, the relationship with staff so we have he has put together a a slideshow that he said he will be he will have ready to present to us if we can get that on the agenda for the next board meeting second thank you i would suggest that these kind of training uh Sessions are not done during board meetings. There's just not enough time to thoroughly get into it. I am more than willing to schedule time for this outside the board meeting, but the constraint of the board meeting, I think, is just too much. Um, we, I, I, I completely hear what you're saying, and I took that into consideration when I was talking with um, Ron. I think it's really important for us to hear the training um, as board members, but I feel like it's equally important for the majority of the public to hear the training as well, because I feel like there's um, some misconstruction of how what what the role of the board is um, to some people. So I feel like the public needs to hear it as well, so they know what our role is and what we're allowed to do. Are we allowed to? Um, Tell a teacher that they can't do something. Are we allowed to give directives? Are we um, allowed to get into any kind of investigations? Are we allowed to hire people? Are we any of that? Um, I think that that's something that the public does need to hear. So I would like to make it when the most most of the people will be able to log in, and they, that seems to be at our regular board meeting. I'm present by me. Any any of this that sounds like like this is going to have to be a public hearing. So if it's not during a regular board meeting, you'd have to arrange for a special board meeting to conduct that. Correct. Or possibly a workshop. Right. Or you had a second. I did have a second, so we'll go ahead and add that to. Um, a future agenda. Yeah, I'm going to question. Okay. Well, to question all those in favor. Well, agenda, I didn't have recommendation to second. Vote on Correct. But we, we, a board member has asked that we vote on it. That's we don't second. have to vote on it because we already have a second. So it's already going to be there. But we'll go ahead and vote. Well, I'm interested in this happening at the next board meeting. That's what I'm asking. It's a yes or no. It's not a discussion item. It's a yes or no. Okay. I'm unclear. We're talking about a motion to put this on the agenda. So it will be agendized and discussed and then voted on appropriately. We don't we don't even need to vote on it. It's just a training. So I already have a motion and I have a second. So it's going to go there. The vote is just to hear your opinion on on it so you can abstain if you'd like or you can vote on it if you'd like it really doesn't make a difference yes yes okay moving on adjournment it's recommended the board adjourn the meeting at 9 13 p.m can i get a motion vote all second vote. call for question oh, wait, oh. discussion first. Oh. <laughs> no. No discussion. Tim Jorgensen, yes. Austin, yes. I'm a member of the board meeting. Oh, two o'clock in the morning. Yes, yes. two o'clock yes. in the yes. morning and one o'clock in the morning. Meeting adjourned at 9 14 p.m. Yes.